Hello everyone, this is Loopy Liss and welcome back to Planet Zoo and you totally know what we're doing today. We are of course making another habitat in the form of a speed build video and today we will be focusing on the saltwater crocodile. Now this habitat isn't going to be absolutely insane, it's going to be quite simple really with a little viewing area which I am struggling on the path right now if you can see that. Very much struggling right there, but I do figure it out eventually. Just a bit of terrain forming needed. But yeah, don't forget, if you like the video, feel free to click that thumbs up down there. And heck, if you like it even more than that, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already, because that is always appreciated. Everything is always appreciated, no matter what. So thank you in advance, or already thank you if you've already done it. Anyway... Saltwater crocodiles. They are seen populating the brackish and freshwater regions of eastern India, southeast Asia, and northern Australia. They are excellent swimmers and have often been spotted far out at sea. So, you know, if you get your rowboat and you're going out to sea in those areas, better watch out for those saltwater crocodiles, otherwise they're going to get you. I don't recommend going out in a rowboat to sea, though. That's probably not going to work out so well. But yeah, another thing about saltwater crocodiles is that they are opportunistic predators. They patiently wait for their prey, lurking beneath the surface of the water. It will feed on anything it can get its jaws on, including water buffalo, monkeys, wild boar, and even sharks if they can get a hold of them. So yes, they're definitely carnivores. <laughs> and it seems like they're able to have anything as their next meal as long as it gets close enough. Now a little bit about this habitat. I wanted to make it enough space, water and land, for two crocodiles and their young as well. Uh, because I just feel like working to the restrictions of how many square meters they want kind of gives me a bit of a challenge. You'll also notice later that I'm having a major battle with foliage and rock work because for some reason they can't traverse around rocks that well, I'm not sure why. Any other animal is able to do it, but I don't know if this is kind of bugged, but I don't know if they take up more space than they look like they do. But I place a lot of rocks down and I have to get rid of them because of how big the animals are, I guess. Because they can't traverse around them and it kind of blocked a whole area of the enclosure. So not ideal, but I figure that out. But yeah, this, this habitat has enough space for two crocodiles and their young, and enough water for the same. I know I just usually share facts about the animals in these videos, but here's a little fact about me that I figured out while making these videos. So, with the Planet Zoo videos, I actually gesture with my hands a lot. Because, you know, this is a voiceover, I'm able to do that. I actually gesture with my hands a lot while I'm talking. No one else is in the room with me. No one else can see this. It's just me. It's gotta be the enthusiasm I have for this game. It has to be. I don't usually talk with my hands. I'm not usually a hand talker, but there we are. Fun fact. Anyway, back to the saltwater crocs while we uh, finish up the rock work here. The saltwater crocodiles are enormous creatures and the world's largest living reptiles. The average male is 5 meters in length and weighs around 500 kilograms. Females are significantly smaller, with the average female saltwater croc measuring a little under 3 meters in length and weighing less than 100 kilograms. So yeah, if you ever see one and it looks about maybe 3 meters in length, it's probably a female. And if you see one bigger than that, then it's probably a male. Right, I should probably mention here that that weird ugly land bit coming over the walkway will not be included in the workshop upload. The barrier does not go around there, the glass is where the uh, habitat ends. So you will need to redo the pathing and you probably need to make it look a little bit prettier out there if you wish to do so, otherwise you could just have it as an empty space with the stairs going down. But a little rock work on your end, I'm sure you can make it look pretty. Okay, this one's an interesting one about saltwater crocodiles. Between November and March, the female lays 40 to 60 eggs in a nest made from plant matter and mud on a riverbank. But here's the crazy part. The temperature of the nest in which eggs are laid determines the sex of the offspring. Lower incubation temperatures produce mostly females. Higher temperatures, mostly males. Now, I am sure we have heard this fact 
like a similar fact in another animal before. I can't remember which one, but I'm sure we've heard it. I want to say it was the Galapagos tortoise. I want to say it was... If you want to go back and check that out for me, then feel free to do so, but I'm sure there's a connection there. So as you can see, we are working on the terrain now, and these crocs actually want a lot of rock in the terrain. Now, I already put rock under the water, but they still want more, so I had to kind of disguise the rock on the land with more sand, soil, and grass. And another thing with the foliage, I like to keep everything in the green. That's just like how I like to do things. I like to keep things at their respected preference when it comes to coverage and terrain. Um, the foliage was tricky. I wanted to make things look quite lush and tropical, but they really don't want a lot in their habitat. And I kind of get it. They just want the space to kind of sprawl out on land when they want to and then go in the water when they want to. And they actually don't require hard shelter either, so that was kind of fun. I didn't have to put a hard shelter in here, which I don't think it would have uh, worked out in here anyway. As you can see, space is quite limited, so it's kind of lucky on that end. Another bit of advice I shared before, but I'll say it again, is with the long grass, you want to get it in the crevices of the rock. It doesn't look quite right when there's like a large clump of it just in the middle of the land, does it? If you've got some rocks lying around, like I've got by here, you could always put a little bit of long grass in the corner there. I know a lot of animals don't necessarily like a lot of long grass, so it works out quite well to have just a little bit in the crevices, because it makes sense for it to grow there. Like, you have a little bit of more... Instead of using foliage, you have a little bit more green from the grass, and I think it has a nice effect. Okay, as you can see, I've placed down a lot of little rocks in the ground. And I've done it underwater, they're fine. But the ones on land, not so much. I check the traversable terrain and where they can get to. They couldn't get to half of the land. <laughs> so I had to take away the little rocks. I had to take away the majority of the little rocks, which you'll probably see me discover in a sec, and you'll see me figure things out. Yeah, look at that. It can't, they can't get to the part where like the viewing area is up top. Like, this is literally very, very tricky for me because I really loved how it looked. I loved all the rock work, so I had to figure out a way to keep some of the rocks but also allow them to be able to traverse a lot of the terrain. So while I did want to make this look a little bit more complex with the lack of foliage in this habitat, the crocodiles genuinely just didn't want to... didn't want the rocks. <laughs> they did not want so many rocks because they don't want to go that close to the rocks for some reason. I think it's a bit skewed how close they can actually get to rocks. It's a little bit skewed. I think that could be improved in the game, my personal opinion. Because of, like, the little rocks, they can't even traverse near them. And that's really awkward. That's super just awkward. But anyway, I opened up the entirety of that space and we had room for a mud bath, so that's totally fine by me. Have you ever heard of the phrase, sleep with one eye open? It turns out that saltwater crocodiles are capable of that. Their central nervous system is wired up such that the right eye remains open when the left side of the brain is awake, and vice versa. It's been noted that saltwater crocodiles are particularly likely to keep an eye out when humans are around rather than other crocodiles, so they are more weary in their slumber when we are lurking around. I genuinely did not know that that was a true thing, that some mammals can actually sleep with one eye open. Apparently some birds can too. Anyway, we're just adding in a little bit more foliage where we can, and now it's time to see the crocodiles in action. And here they are, enjoying their new home on a very rainy day. But they're loving life, and they're loving the land, and they're loving the water. Maybe love in the water a little bit more than the land because I barely ever see them out of the water. It was very lucky of me to actually capture these shots. The link to this habitat will be in the description. It will be up on the workshop, so keep an eye out for that. And don't forget, if you want to see me do a habitat for a specific animal that you have in mind that I haven't done yet, feel free to recommend me one down below. And as always, feedback is greatly appreciated, so let me know what you think of this habitat. It's quite simple, but I think it's quite functional as well. And they seem to love it, so it's all good. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you could like, comment, subscribe, share this video, I'd really appreciate that too. And I will see you in the next video. Take care now.
拜拜。